I'm Morgan and today I'm going to give my thoughts on the movie Overboard from 1987. This movie stars Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell in it who are apparently like a couple in real life which I thought was really cool. Um, I picked out this movie to watch because it was free on YouTube. <laughs> I did not really know a lot about it when I decided to watch it. Um, I don't know, I just thought it was something that it's like, oh, this has a cool title. I like the like advertising um, image for it where it's like the two people falling off a boat. I'm like, this looks cool. I would watch this. Um, so I didn't really know a lot about this coming into the movie. I watched it with my significant other and it, it, sometimes it's hard to, to like find movies that both of us want to watch. Um, uh, but there were definitely some things about the movie where it's like, there is no way that this could have been made any time, like, more recent than the 80s. Um, for me, personally, my thoughts were, like, it would be easier to identify a missing person now than it was back then. And so there's much less opportunity for there to be, like, mistaken identity situations in the internet era especially nowadays with social media where so many people have like social media histories like it would be much easier to figure out the identity of someone who's missing in the modern era than it was in the 80s so I thought that the whole like her being brought home from the hospital by the wrong person part of the plot just wouldn't work nowadays <laughs> um, and um uh, my significant other pointed out that like um this probably was not legal what he did like he was pointing out that like um she could probably sue him and also like is this kidnapping um and that was something that it's like you know what that is a good point that's a really good point this has the same like this movie has the same exact issue that the man without a heart does it romanticizes kidnapping <laughs> um so like i think that there are some issues with like how well the plot actually aged. I do not think that the plot aged well. <laughs> um, uh, but I do think that there are a lot of things that are good about this movie. Um, I do feel like the main characters have great, um, what's the word? Chemistry. Um, I do like the whole wholesome family, like the whole wholesome family story of like, hey, this family has like lost their mother, they're struggling to get by, and now the kids have a new mom, and they're all getting along so swimmingly, and it's so wholesome. Like, this kind of, like, found family dynamic. Like, it's so wholesome. It's so sweet. It's so lovely. Um, and, like, I I love how, the like, Goldie Hawn's character, I believe, like, Annie slash Joanna, does seem to genuinely form, like, a parental relationship with the kids in the story, even though it's under, like, false pretenses. It seems, like, it's really wholesome. Like, it seems wholesome. <laughs> um, um, but on the other hand, it's like, I do feel like the movie contains, like, dubious consent because she, like, the main character um, went to bed with a guy under, like, completely false pretenses. She was under the impression that she was his wife, but in reality, he kind of, like, kidnapped her from the hospital. So, um, it does feel like the relationship dynamic is one that's, like, this really isn't very healthy. Um, like, I just don't think that forming a relationship on the basis of, like, complete and utter deceit is the best thing in the long run. I get that it made for a great script, but I don't think that's something that should be replicated in real life. Um, and another thing that I really loved about the story is, like, Joanna slash Annie's character growth is, like, really, like, she has major character growth, which I think tells, like, it creates good storytelling, because she's, it reminds me of, um, King Roughbeard or King Thrushbeard, the old Grimm's fairy tale, which is about, like, a princess who is super ultra snobby, and then, at the, like, she goes through a bu bunch of, like, turmoil or whatever, and at the end, she regains her status, but is actually a nicer person. Um, in the same way, I feel like this story, like, it reminds me of that. Like, the main character started off really dislikable, a really strongly dislikable person, but through the events of the story, she has character growth and turns into a completely different person by the end of the movie. Like, I think it's got a great narrative of character growth. Like, I really think that there is great character growth in this movie. I think the characters change and grow and turn into better people. Um, so, in that way, it's very dynamic, interesting storytelling. Um, 
I loved the, like, I don't know, I think the only way that this works in even as recent as the 80s is the setting. The fact that they had this in like some rural, I think it was like, was it like Oregon or Washington? It was some northwestern town, but the fact that it does seem to be really rural and the like the house that they're living in is one that seems to have technology from like the 40s because I know that that type of like the type of washing machine that though that um Goldie Hawn's dress gets caught in like that's an old like electric I think like an electric mangle or an electric ringer or something and those sorts of things kind of I think stopped being used not only because there were better like technology that came along later but because those are like safety hazards and there were issues of people getting like caught in those and getting injured like pe like people's hands getting caught and getting injured and stuff so like I could tell from the technology that was around that that, ho that house was really one of disrepair that probably has technology from like the, I'm gonna guesstimate the 40s and so um, the fact that the technology surrounding them seems very old-fashioned, uh, that suggests to me that it's like, yes, this is a somewhat rural area, and even though, like, there is a hospital there, the, the people at the hospital don't seem to be super, like, hey, let's properly identify that this guy is who he says he is. They're just taking him kind of at his word based off of, like, anecdotes, and it's like, yeah, suppose... <laughs> like, supposedly he identifies her based off of, like, a birthmark instead of actual, like, legal documents. And that's something that it's like, that wouldn't fly in the modern era. But if we're in a very rural area in the 80s, I can theoretically imagine that being possible. <laughs> um, but I, I do kind of wonder, is this, like, a far stretch even for the 80s? But yeah, um, there are other things that it's like, I don't know, like, do I like or not but like how do I put this like when all the characters got like poison oak I'm like oh my gosh that's that's awful I'm so sad that that happened to them but it did leave for like it, it allowed plot things to happen it allowed the protagonist to show vulnerability about the fact that like she's really self-conscious and she doesn't want to be um looking imperfect like that's some her beauty is something that she cares a lot about her appearance and her like her growing and being willing to face people despite the fact that she has like calamine all over her face um t because of the poison oak like that's character growth so like little incidents like that where i'm like oh my gosh that's so cringe i don't want to i don't want to see people getting poison oak i'm like well that works for the plot it carries along the plot so even like even though it's like oh i i, I feel a little bit like not the happiest to see that on screen like I don't know like poison oak just sounds awful at the same time it's like it was used as a plot device to bring along the narrative so I think that was a great choice um, so yeah I love how this movie didn't have like gratuitous violence really um I don't feel like it's suitable for children because there's like there's at least one sex scene and there's uh, I'd say a lot of innuendo so I don't think it's a movie that you should be showing children but I do think that it's a good movie for like a couple to watch as adults like it's it's a little bit cringy it's a little bit campy in some ways it didn't age really well but it's in other ways it's wholesome it's different <laughs> um it does remind me of a man without a heart the book though it really does it it reminds me of a man without a heart by ruby amares that's 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 really what i'm thinking about this like in, in a lot of ways it reminds me of that because it's like kidnapping and character growth yeah that's what we're gonna make a movie about um but I love how, like, the there is character growth. And I love how at the end, like, hey, the woman who... <sighs> the woman who is trying to, like, not pay this carpenter his bills at the end of it, it's like, well, she has her own money. And now she and his fam... Her new fam... Like, newfound family, like, oh, she has money, so they're gonna live a better life now. Like, they can afford things like proper working appliances now. Like, I think that's good. <laughs> like, there's there's progress. Their quality of life has gone up. Um, I think her husband, her original husband, is kind of a trashy character. Like, <laughs> he's not really likable, but I think he's not likable on purpose um, to serve, like, the, the plot. Like, if he was likable, would she stay, would she have left him? No, probably not. <laughs> so I think it makes sense to make the 
the original has been like as dislikable as possible um yeah <laughs> but yeah just like how do I put this if someone is not paying their bills you should take them to court you shouldn't kidnap them that's all I'm saying but overall good movie um thank you so much for listening to my thoughts on overboard and I hope you have a great day